What's up, Style Nation? Katie here, your favorite personal stylist and host of the Style for Life podcast. My mission on this show is to give you the key codes on how to transform your style into that VIP backstage pass to success. The styling strategies and mindset hacks that I share on the show each week are the same ones I use with my clients to boost their confidence, to book more clients, and to simply just feel good. Not to mention these techniques are the exact same ones that I've implemented personally over the last three years of building my own brand. After I was let go on Zoom from my 17-year marketing career. So if they can help me and my ego build this business and overcome that transition, I know that they can help and work for you too. So tune in every week as we decode the world of fashion, discover the power of confidence, and give you the scoop on how to create a style that amplifies your brands and your life. Swipe on that bold lipstick, hit the subscribe button because styled for life, this is where style isn't about what you wear, but how you live. Let's start the show. What's up, lady? I am so excited that you are tuning in to today's episode and I have to share a Black Friday deal with you. I just have to. I love Black Friday. I don't know if it's because I worked in retail for 11 years of my career, but it's just one of my favorite shopping holidays. It is one of the status quo things that I buy into because I know from working in retail for so many years that these are the best deals of the year. So as a small business owner, I have to create one of my own Black Friday deals. Now, I don't support shopping without intention and shopping over spending time for your family and shopping over feeling grateful for everything that's going on in your life. But I do support saving and getting value on things that will change your life and transform you. So one of my Black Friday offers this year, which I'm super excited about, is $100 off an annual membership inside the Style Squad. For just $390, one time for a whole year, you can be a Style Squad member. It's getting so juicy inside of there. So I want to invite you in. Use code SQUAD100. You'll get it years worth of access to the Style Squad. There's three certified stylists in there. So there's me and two other stylists that I have worked with and trained with inside the Style Squad that can answer all of your style questions. We have monthly choose your own adventure style calls so that you can get in on your pain point. What do you need for your style? What's going to ignite your style spark right now? Over 30 entrepreneurs are in there right now. 30 amazing, tight knit, off the chain, juicy entrepreneurs that you can connect with. And maybe that's not your jam. Maybe you just want the style support. We have quarterly trends reports. We have monthly mood boards. We have weekly what I wore check-ins that you can get style support in and or just show off your outfit. So for $3.90 a year, that's only $32.50 a month to celebrate yourself and all your accomplishments. So if you've been eyeing the style squad, Use this Black Friday and my obsession over Black Friday to get in now for $100 off your annual membership when you use the code SQUAD100 on the checkout page. Awesome. Access details are in the show notes. I will see you on the inside. Helen, thank you so much for being on the show today. I'm super excited to have you on Style for Life, and I'm excited to vibe out with you today. Thank you for coming on the show. How are you feeling today? I am so excited. I'm honored to be here, Katie. Thank you for asking me. It's so great. Oh, I'm so excited. I love jamming out with other podcasters and other female entrepreneurs. And I know today's going to be super juicy. So before we dive in, let's do the annoying, like, tell us about yourself. <laughs> you want the, like, the personal stuff, the whole red wine selling sunset, fitness addict stuff, or do you want the, the business the business stuff? We Katie? want the juice, and we want the explicit, the juiciness, the real deal, the real Helen. 
<laughs> okay, no. So yeah, as you can probably tell from my accent, I'm over here in the UK. I live in a place called Leicestershire, which I always tell people is an absolute nightmare to spell. I'm a mom of two boys, a wife, and yeah, I'm a solo entrepreneur of 19 years. I built four businesses from scratch. And as I said, the things I am obsessed with that I do pretty much on a daily basis is drink red wine, work out on my Peloton, and I just love watching all the trash TV, like all that kind of the property shows, the California kind of lifestyle. I just love it all. So, and we're obsessed with the US. So um, in our house, our boys play baseball and we have like, yeah, we're, we're just pretend Americans basically. <laughs> That is so funny because my husband and I have been binge watching Ted Lasso. Like we're late to the Ted Lasso party by American standards. Mm -hmm. So I feel like right now I'm like, oh my God, I need to move to England because I feel like they will get my sense of humor and I can just say, wait and fuck all day and everybody will love me. <laughs> Welcome any day. <laughs> I would feel really like posh with my accent. I, you know, I spend most of my time with Americans most of my clients are in the US, like a network over there. And yeah, I always come off the, I always like feel, oh my goodness, like I'm so posh on my accent. <laughs> yeah, so you're welcome here. Bring your American accent over here anytime, Katie. Yay. I was thinking, I was like, my podcast feels like it was just elevated from that past accent, wasn't it? It's like, oh. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, real quick before we get into the messaging, which, oh God, I love, I would literally, your Instagram and how we even got connected is like one of my favorite ones to just like go to and scroll. Like we people joke about doom scrolling on Insta, but I like to just like go to your profile and just like scroll through. And it's so well, obviously well written, but it's so juicy and insightful and it's really, really good. But before we jump into that, you mentioned Peloton and like, I have to know who's your favorite Peloton instructor. Cause I'm a Peloton junkie. Oh, well, thank you, first of all, for saying that. So it depends. I do a lot of strength workouts. I'm my favorite. Um, I love Kali. I really love Kali. But I love Tunde. Oh, she's just fire. She's amazing. <laughs> and when I am on my Peloton, yeah, I love Kendall as well. She's just so sparky and I, I love her. So, yeah. And Cody, Cody makes me laugh. But then sometimes it's too much because then I can't actually work out. So <laughs> you're laughing. I had to ask because Tunde is my favorite. I do mostly strength. I don't have the actual bike. I just do the app. Tunde is my favorite. And then now that I'm thinking of it, it's kind of embarrassing, but like Jermaine Johnson, the London Peloton guy is my favorite. And my husband always talk about how like we just love his accent. <laughs> <laughs> It's but, not just for the accent though, right? <laughs> no, his workouts are amazing, but on a day that like I don't have the motivation, I'm like, give me that accent. But by all standards, I do think our music, American music is better. So I was like, if he could just get American hip hop in his accent, it would be Peloton heaven. <laughs> Perfect class. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Enough about Peloton. Let's talk about EO. Mm -hmm. Um, let's talk for a second about messaging and how do we become really effective communicators like in our business? I talk a lot about this from a style standpoint, like using our style to communicate. And I think it's from where I'm sitting, that's what style represents for me is what I'm wearing is a constant way that I communicate with myself and with others um, because it makes me feel a certain way. So when you think of like effective messaging and communication, what is your like secret sauce to make that really effective? Okay, there are so many pieces to this, but I'm going to do like a couple of things that I think will be instant ways that your listeners can kind of go back to their their social media and say, right, do I have this? Do I have that? So when it comes to messaging, it's not just about your content. It's not just about what you post on Instagram or Facebook. It's however you show up when you are speaking or writing. So it's how you represent yourself. You know, it could be like now on a podcast, it could be in an email, it could be on your Instagram post. So that's the first thing to say. And AI is an amazing tool. I use it as well, but you need to kind of get your messaging right for, you know, when you do show up live, you can't be replaced right now. So it's so important. And the first thing is really having complete clarity on what it is that you do. And it is the problem that you solve, like exactly what makes you unique that, you know, what is the unique result that you get for your clients and the unique processes that you have? Like, what are those step-by-step -step frameworks that you take your clients through to get them the result that they want? And 
you need that clarity. You need to have that complete confidence in what you do, because if you don't, firstly, you are not going to be able to sell yourself. You're not going to have that belief behind you. Confidence is your biggest selling point. I think we spoke about this when you came on my podcast. You know, it's all about portraying yourself. Having that confidence is essential. Um, And what you do is amazing to help women find their confidence, you know, um, as a stylist. But when it comes to your business as well, you need to know where you're going with your with your business and your clients can see that as well. Your clients need to know very, very clearly when they come onto your social media page, when they get an email from you, they need to know exactly how it is that you're going to help them get the result or transformation that they want. So that is so important. And it is down to getting very, very, very specific. Like, what is it about you that makes you different and stand out? And I always like to say to my clients that I work with, if you feel that you're working in a saturated market and you're worried about, oh my goodness, you know, like everyone else is doing the same thing as me, you have not got specific enough. You need to get even more refined in what you do because then you're going to feel so confident in your unique abilities. And I promise you, you are not operating in a saturated market no matter what, because we can all do things in a different way. So that's the first thing. And then really with your messaging, it is about communicating what your clients need. And I love this analogy that, again, I share a lot is, are you giving your clients or your future clients the chocolate that they really, really want, they're craving, or are you giving them the broccoli? What are you selling? Are you selling them the chocolate or the broccoli? Like we know, (laughs) we know that they want the chocolate. Like most people love chocolate, right? They want that. And that's what they're looking for. When they come onto social media or when they're looking for someone to help them, they are looking for that chocolate. They're craving it. Now you might know that they need the broccoli. They might need these extra things behind the scenes. You can't be selling them that. You can't tell them, I've got this broccoli for you. No one's going to buy that. So it's about really understanding what your clients truly need as a first port of call. Like what are the key usually two or three things that they are looking for in you. Like what solution are they really, really desperate to have? Like what transformation? Is it confidence? Is it like lack of like time? Is it lack of um, just knowledge of what to actually put on their bodies? If you're not, you're working as a stylist, you know, that's the, that's the chocolate, right? But you know that there's a lot of broccoli behind that. You know that there is so much more to that. There's so much more they're going to gain from working with you. You can't sell them that to start with. When it comes to the messaging, you've got to put this chocolate out in front of them. And this is the thing I see so often that people are not actually doing because it's not going to sell. If you're not actually giving people what they need and showing them how you are that unique person to get them the chocolate and the way you're going to do it, that's what I see a lot of people missing. And you're not going to connect. You're not going to attract those new clients, those new leads into your life. You're not going to nurture your audience that you currently have. And you're not going to convert into sales. And that's the that's what your messaging does. It attracts, it nurtures, and it sells. So it's there obviously there is so much more we can go into, but that's like the very kind of surface level thing. It's you know, to, to start with, go back and see, am I doing those things? And ask yourself those questions. Do you have complete clarity? And are you actually giving them and selling them what they think they need? So basically, clarity is chocolate, is what I heard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so <sold>, Helen. <laughs> yeah. Clarity clear clarity and chocolate. Yeah, for sure. Oh my god, that's so amazing. Um I love what you said about that that analogy. I freaking love analogies. It's so juicy. I wanna take it back one second to the clarity piece. So like getting really specific on clarity. It's like a two part question. Do you feel like the clarity piece is where a lot of people struggle? Yes, all the time. And I've literally just come off. We're just saying I was late to your podcast recording by a couple of minutes because I'm on a one on one call. I've been on three one on one calls with my clients this today. And every single one of them, they're experienced, talented, oh, so freaking amazing women. But it's the clarity that they are lacking right now in their business because they just, they've been doing something that they felt they should do. Mm. Whatever reason, like they then thought that was the way to make money. They thought that, you know, the logic had stated that someone else they'd seen doing something similar 
was making money, so I'll do the same. They didn't light them up. Or they're doing something because maybe a coach has told them to do something. Or they're just doing something like that isn't aligned with their lifestyle. And we have to get really, really clear on that because so often we like, we do the thing we think we should because maybe it's more lucrative or we have all these stories and beliefs. But actually, if it's not going to make you happy and, you know, you, you can't actually define exactly what it is that you want to do, who you want to work with, you can't go anywhere from there. And that's why it's the first piece that I work on, you know, in my group coaching with my one-on-one clients. It's everything. It's so important to spend time on this. Go and sit, go and sit and like really think, what the hell do I want to do? Like, what do I really want to do? What am I going to like want to jump out of bed every single day and sit on a Zoom with somebody with a client and do? What am I going to really get excited about creating content? And like, oh, I've got to say this. Like I could say, I could post about a million pieces of con- content a day because I love what I do. I have so much to say. But until you find that, and get clear on what that is and be true to who you know who you are and what you want to do not what because you think you should do that's so important and that is where it starts yeah i the reason i ask that question is because i feel that same way too it's like i feel like i say on repeat over and over like you know your style archetype like first you have to be able to tell me exactly like what pieces you're attracted to before mm-hmm. we can even begin uncovering the broccoli right yeah. like or we can even dig into why you won't wear them that's yeah. definitely the broccoli right there but like knowing that clarity is like where it all begins and sometimes i even get like annoyed with myself because i feel like i'm saying the same thing over and over but i feel like that's the part where i well me personally i know for sure and then as helping people get there like that's the one part where everyone gets tripped up and it's so hard to say like what we want because we're so inundated is there one exercise, one question, one mantra, like just one thing that's super specific that if anyone's listening, they're like, yes, I, this is what I need right now in my life that you could share with everyone that like can just get them over the hump. There's two questions that you could start and ask yourself. Um, and that is your kind of zone of genius ideally is going to be and what is going to make you happy is going to be a combination of these two things so firstly what are you skilled at like what where's your zone of genius and on, and if you can combine that with the second thing which is what really makes you happy and brings you energy that is like you are you are winning so it's kind of like am I doing both of those things in my life right now because sometimes we think okay yeah I've got skills in something you know, I've, I'm guilty of this, you know, like this time last year, I was coaching something quite different. It was, I've refined my business um, because I thought that's really what I was supposed to do or I had skills in it at the time. But actually, it wasn't what I really wanted to do. So I wasn't matching those two things. So if you can go away and like, look at that, I would, I would start there, but it's going to take time. It's going to take experience. It's going to take you going out there and trying it and it not feeling good and, then you maybe pivot and you refine and you gradually find what you absolutely love. And also you'll find where your skills lie. You'll become so good at what you do. And that's what happened with me and messaging. I realized, oh my goodness, like all my life, I've loved language, like all my life. I'm obsessed with words. I'm obsessed with the nuances of words. And I've refined and refined and refined everything down. So I was like, I am just going to be like the messaging goddess I've never said that before (laughs) that's what I'm gonna be and I was like I am coming at this with all about gentle sales through empowered profitable messaging and that was really kind of like yeah why not why have I not thought this before and that's where my skills really really were and I hadn't owned it and I think we just hide away so much from you know what we truly want to do because we think we should be doing something different so that was a bit of a long answer but yeah hopefully that helps no, that was really juicy. And now you've given me another question. Um, I love that you said you want to be the messaging goddess. I had read somewhere, I can't, I read so much stuff. It's hard to remember where all the content consumption is coming from. But I had read this one quote and it was saying like, if we cast spells with our clothes and like what we were, what we're wearing can help us cast spells and like words are our wands, which I love both um, because 
obviously I love the fashion side of things. And then like how you and I even became connected is like how, what we're wearing then influences what we say and how we carry ourselves and things like that. So it's super juicy. What, when you say like the nuance of words and language, I, I have so many questions that came out for there. I'm like, which one do I want to ask? I have like the really general, like, what does that mean for you? But is there like, I'd like to get in specifics because I think that's where like we see the little teeny evolutions on a daily basis. Is there a word right now that you see, or maybe a group of words that like, you are like, if every female entrepreneur could stop using these oh. words, their lives would be so much better. Yeah, just phrases, I think. Yeah, I mean, you're putting me on the spot here, but I think <laughs> there's so many things that are just oversaid and overstated and they become part of like a trend and there's, they yeah. lose their meaning. Yes. You know, and I, I, I don't think like manifest is a good example, like manifesting. What does that mean? You know, really, what does that mean? And we like, throw it out there and it means you, you know, it can mean all kinds of things. Um, but there's so many different things like embodied. Like, what does that mean? Like, I'm sure you come across that with what you do as well. Like, and I want you to embody your true self, you know, with your clothing, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, <laughs> what does that mean? Um. I know the word niche again, and I've you've noticed I've not used it till now, where I could have done when I said about getting clear. Yeah. But it's just your niche is your focus, for goodness sake. You know, it's just your focus. And it's getting really super specific on where you're focusing on your business. And it's like these words become so fluffy and like they become they take on a like such a generalist meaning and they stop actually, you know, describing what it is that they probably originally started to describe yeah. I feel that way about the word confidence so like I know we've talked about this and that's empowered as well oh my god if I could get my clients sorry I, just no, don't no. Really, I want to empower women what does that mean and this is what I help people do no we need to break that down like what do you actually want to achieve when you're empowering women what is it what's the result you're going to get not just going to make them feel empowered. What does that mean? I don't wake up in the morning thinking, oh, today I want to hire Katie to feel empowered. No, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I love that. But I think that's a good practice. Kind of what you were saying is like, you get really clear. And it's like, if you pay attention to the words that you use on a daily basis and you think about what they mean, mm -hmm. that can help you build that clarity in your business. Cause that's what confidence was. I was like, I, if one more person, I know essentially that's what I'm gifting. Yeah is confidence but what does that mean it's yeah. means that you're going to do this and then i had i literally went and looked up in the dictionary I was like what's the actual definition of confidence because if i hear it one more time <laughs> like my head is going to explode mm. so i appreciate that and for i don't mean to put you on the spot ellen um oh. but before we wrap this up there's definitely one thing that i want to touch on with you and what i really think like yes i think you're the goddess of language and messaging and that's why i love your Instagram and listening to you and your podcast and the way you talk. And like you said, the way you show up and represent yourself, but I love how you say like gentle sales. And I know, and as you know, like you've really mastered that. And I want to just like shed light on that for a second. And what is that to you and how do we get there? Yeah. Gentle sales is really kind of, it's what's necessary because the aggressive, persuasive, twisting of arms sales is not what anyone wants and it's absolutely not necessary. And it just, to me, is so obvious. I've had this question asked quite a few times recently and every time I kind of give a different answer as it's just, it's so freaking obvious to me. Like we don't, we should be empowering our clients to buy, want to buy from us and invest with us. And it's because that way they're ready. They're going to get the results. They're ready to get those results. They're not just going to like, oh, I wasn't quite sure about it, but I'm going to pay the money anyway. And it's about positioning yourself with your messaging and the conversations that you have that allows them to see the value of who you are. So they are ready to buy. They are ready to go all in. And it comes through communicating and it comes through demonstrating that they need you as well, but in a, like a, a softer way, you don't have to like put it in their face. Like you need me, otherwise you're going to like lose money or feel crap about yourself or whatever. It's, it's just allowing them to see that. But the essence of it is 
building a relationship and it goes back to like the oldest most basic principle of business that is it's about building relationships that's what business is it's about finding the problem and then filling the gap giving them the solution um and building relationship to do that we all you know we all we don't buy from people we don't we don't know. We don't buy from people we don't trust. You know, the whole no like, and trust. That's another phrase I wish people would stop throwing around. But, you know, it is about just really kind of finding finding that connection with somebody and listening to them. You know, I started my first six-figure business like oh, how many years ago? 19 years ago. And it, I, I had no training and I had no one to teach me how to sell, but I quickly learned that I had to listen to what the the clients needed and then deliver. And it's just sitting down and listening um, and then telling them, tell them how you can help. If genuinely, if you can't send them somewhere else, you know. So I think that's what it is for me. And it is down to relationship, genuine relationship building without any sort of force or persuasion. Mm -hmm. And and that's what's going to really create great results for your business because like I said you're going to have buyers that are so excited to work with you and so ready to invest so is creating relationships I think in my experience I think is really easy for a lot of women in the entrepreneur space but sometimes I see a gap or people talk to me about this like when we're doing styling things and maybe they're they're getting styled for a very specific event and there's different things and we're styling them to feel really confident and like whatever that thing is um do you have any like specifics on like you've built the relationship and then is it just creating the offer so that now people know how to work with you how do you even approach sales mm -hmm. or do you or is it just simple be this being in conversations with people if it was that easy, it would be great, wouldn't it? <laughs> Shall we see in the DMs and the next minute there's like money coming into your bank? Hey, dollar signs. <laughs> so, no, there is a process. And if there is, this is what I teach you. This, this, there's a strategy. I'm in a season of huge like process. And I don't want that in system. I don't want that to sound really like, oh, masculine and like mechanical. But it is, you're running a business, you need to actually put money in your bank. And there needs to be a way to do that. And it is about when you've started a relationship, it's about giving value, taking people to the next step. Mm -hmm. What process do you have in place to get people to that next piece of information that's going to support them and show them that you are the expert in what you do? What free things are you going to give them to help them see that you are like the person to fill that need? Um, are you going to take them to a Facebook community? Are you going to give them like a free resource? Um, and it's like, are you going to get them on a sales call? It's like, you've got to have a process in place depending on what your business is. And it has to work for your level of client. And I think the mistake I often see is that people are not really looking at the level of the client that they have. Mm -hmm. So it could, you know, sometimes people have clients who are brand new to your world, who have no experience in what you do. And it's the first time they've ever thought about coming to a stylist. Like they have no clue, like, and they have a different set of problems to the people who are, you know, experienced with their wardrobes. They know the power of personal brand and how that can really help like you dress them. So your sales process has to be right for that level of client as well. And, you know, like the buyers at the higher level are not going to have time to be on a sales call. You've got to really kind of, or even look at a PDF, a freebie. They're not going to be looking at your kind of three page guide to how to sell yourself over four. You know, it's not going to work. It's about being smart. It's about understanding your client throughout the whole thing. And it is having a process in place. You've got to have that journey work out how you're taking them from brand new in your world through to a client yeah mm. super juicy so again clarity because if you don't know mm. who that person is we don't know how yeah. to come to that system i love that so much um and i'm forever in my mind like i used to have written down on my board like cl clarity creates confidence but now i'm gonna have to throw chocolate in there and i yeah. love alliteration yeah. so. what's your favorite chocolate bar Oh, that's a good question. Now I feel like I'm on the that's spot. Important. Yeah. yeah now I feel like I'm on the spot. Um, well, like my chocolate of choice currently is like at Trader Joe's, there's this like dark dark chocolate with a caramel inside of it. So I eat you those. have their like salted um 
dark chocolate covered almonds. Oh my god, they're so good. Yeah, give me and dark chocolate. Trader Joe's so much. <laughs> okay, so I don't know the name brand, but like, give me chocolate, give me salt, and give me some caramel. Like I'm like, ooh. Okay. Um, and I'm sold. That's my go-to. Um, I have I a like little that. nightly ritual with my chocolate. So now I'll think about <laughs> you and clarity and confidence every time. <laughs> <laughs> so juicy i appreciate your insights and your nuggets um my brain is like ping 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 is there anything that like a question that we haven't covered or anything that you want everyone to know before we pimp you out and let everyone know how to follow you and dig mm -hmm. into that juicy instagram content and podcast oh, i think just generally as an entrepreneur um i would just say i'll leave you with this just to like go out there and be fearless don't like the I think <laughs> one of my biggest superpowers slash just I can't help the way I am is I am so I always jump into things before I really think about it and it's caused me to fall flat on my face so many times the world is watching but I don't care and if you can just find that because you're not going to get to where you want without doing it I'm afraid <laughs> so I would just leave you with saying that really and um, and when you do find that clarity, it does give you that confidence to go and just just try and just just be and learn. Um, it's so important, yeah. I mean, I love that. Like, just let the world watch and inspire them by falling and getting back up and falling and getting back up. Um, that's the best inspiration there is, I think. Thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Where can everybody go find you and listen to your podcast? Well, thank you. I've loved this. It's been so much fun. So, yes, thank you. So Instagram is the place that I hang out. Helen Thacker, just go and find me there. Drop me a DM and tell me you've listened to this. And I would be so happy to just give you a couple of tips on your own page. Absolutely no problem whatsoever. And yeah, my podcast is the Purpose, Potential and Power podcast. And obviously Katie will be on there very, very soon. It's a great Thank you so much, Alan, for being on the show today. I appreciate it so much. Thank you.